Good afternoon. Welcome to the 32nd DEM I Wonder webinar. DEM has so many services, offerings, programs, and hidden gems that we want to share with all of you. So we're excited to take just a few minutes to highlight these features in our webinar. The Utah Division of Emergency Management is hosting this webinar series aimed at providing local emergency managers with relevant content and opportunities to enhance their capabilities. Webinars are live for Q&A and are recorded for later viewing on the DEM website and YouTube channel. Most of these webinars are seminars or workshops with a hands-on portion, which will allow emergency managers to become oriented to the DEM process or test a DEM product. So our schedule today will be as follows. We'll start with our ground rules and etiquette. Next, we'll have a brief presentation by James Ray, and he'll be discussing, I wonder what Be Ready Business is. Following the presentation, there will be a hands-on portion where participants will be encouraged to test out the product or process that was presented. Following the hands-on portion of our program, the presenter will be available for a Q&A session. Following the Q&A, we will close with a short message about the upcoming webinars. So the ground rules today are fairly simple. Please mute your line while the presenter is presenting. If you have a question, you may type it in the group chat or unmute at the appropriate time to ask your question. This session is being recorded and will be available on our website for future viewing. Thanks for all your attendance today. With that, we will turn time over to James. All right, thank you. Super excited about this. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Again, my name is James Ray, and I'm leading the effort with our state's Be Ready Business program. So. The big question on the table is what is Be Ready Business? So um, Be Ready Business is one of the four pillar programs of the Be Ready Utah campaign. Uh, we've got family, school, business, and communities. All of those audiences are the audiences that Be Ready Utah wants to do the four actions towards preparedness, which is to be informed, make a plan, get a kit, and get involved. So just really quickly, uh, there's those four preparedness actions that we want everybody to do. And let's talk about being informed really quick. All of these preparedness actions um, are applicable to each of the various audiences, though sometimes you then apply those principles to your specific audience. Now, be informed, we want people to know what hazards are in their area, especially as it comes to business. Uh, learn how to prepare for and what to do in the different emergencies. Businesses need to develop uh, emergency response plans so they can uh, respond appropriately. And then uh, learn about the various hazard insurances. There's a financial side to business uh, continuity and uh, knowing that insurance side of things is very important as well as to families and schools. Uh, and we want people to be connected to reliable sources of information as well. Um, the next action is making a plan. Uh, learn what those protective actions are and teach it to each other. If it's in a business setting, teach the employees those protective actions. Uh, you can develop shelter plans, evacuation plans, communication plans. Uh, as well as whatever important information that your business holds or your family holds, uh, the principles still apply. Uh, there's getting a kit is an action we want everybody to do. And as it applies to businesses, uh, you want to gather the necessary supplies to be able to sustain your internal operations for a period of time until help can come. And then uh, get involved. Uh, reach out to others, uh, businesses, family members. Uh, they're, they're not just an island of their own. Uh, we're all part of a community. And so reach out to others. Uh, you can get involved on social media, our website, um, all of the information that's coming out. I'll share soon about an email listserv that you can join uh, to receive um, audience specific type information. And then um, volunteering is a great thing to do and donating responsibly. So um, without beating around the bush, I, I want to get to the root 
of well, one of the problems at, are some reality checks in regards to business preparedness and even individual and family preparedness. First, it's not natural to spend time on something you hope never happens and money on something you hope you never need. Second, building a business continuity plan can be time consuming for small businesses who don't have the manpower or the knowledge to dedicate to it. Most businesses are steeped in just trying to keep their business afloat. Uh, second, uh, third also is that the everyday grind of life has a psychological effect, causing us to not really think proactively. We find ourselves spending our time on what is directly calling for our attention. And while disasters don't happen every day, the, the bills do. So these are some of the realities that are the root causes for why so many people and businesses are not prepared. But the fact of the matter is, disasters happen, mother nature still does its thing, technology fails, and bad people act in bad ways. And when disaster catches you unprepared, it hurts the family and the bottom line and those things you have worked so hard to build can quickly vanish into rubble. <clears throat> uh, here's a fun little video. I um, just want to play really quick. Uh, it's a humorous video about the concept of business continuity planning and highlights some of the benefits of having a plan. There's two men in an elevator experiencing a spectrum of disasters from a loss of power to rain, fire, and human threat. And one man is prepared for each disaster and the other is not. Wait, wait. Thanks, running late? Yeah, traffic was rough this morning. Crisis averted. No crisis, just a little traffic. But what if there had been a lot of traffic? Everyone needs a backup plan. Just like every company needs a business continuity plan. What just happened? Could be a blackout. Completely unpredictable. Where did you get that? It's important to start your business continuity planning early. How long can you operate without core systems and processes? What if your entire network went down? No communications means no sales and lost customers. Why isn't this thing working? Finally. Recovery's good. But 75% of companies without continuity plans fail within three years. Who's in charge during a disaster? Hmm? Like a fire? Identifying teams and assigning tasks is essential. Everyone needs to know their responsibilities. What's going on? It could be a hurricane. Hurricane? Weather can badly damage your assets. Planning better prepares your company to recover from any disruption. Why are you getting wet? Not everyone's under the same umbrella. It's important to test, update, and exercise your preparedness method. So, can we share? No. A business continuity plan for one company won't fit another. That's why it's important for everyone to develop their own plans. Why are you wearing a mask? Don't forget to plan for the human element. Contingency planning should go beyond natural disasters. Plan for man-made threats too. Will your continuity plan be in place when it matters most? So um, that 
that video is on our YouTube channel. You can use that to help kind of promote any uh, business preparedness efforts within your own communities. Um, but uh, why, why is business so, preparedness so important? They kind of highlighted it there. Um, one of the core messages here is that um, statistically speaking, three years after an initial impact, 75% of businesses that don't have continuity plans will fail. And that has a huge economic impact within our own communities. So it's oftentimes in the best interest of emergency managers and communities to help promote private sector preparedness. And so that's, that's what Be Ready um, business is all about, is trying to promote that private sector preparedness. And here's some interesting statistics that the cost of downtime you can kind of see some of the numbers there for small, mid-sized, and large businesses. And then uh, from a 2012 survey, uh, found that only 46% of respondents were familiar with local hazards. So we want to get people familiar. And then also um, approximately 80% of buildings value is in its non-structural elements. The components and the contents. Uh, so um, again, some additional points of why per business preparedness is important. Um, also, companies that experience business interruptions of any type and can't resume operations within 10 days will likely fail. And employees that are, employees are 75% more likely to take action when their employers encourage them to be prepared for disasters. And then uh, one additional statistic is that 52% of small business owners estimate the time necessary for disaster recovery is three months. Uh, and that, that can hit pretty hard when it comes down to the bottom line. So uh, one of the things that Be Ready Utah offers is business continuity planning training. Uh, we've got training developed um, and also resources to help local businesses build business continuity plans. So if, if you're in need of any of those from a local perspective and want to promote that locally, um, please reach out to us for business continuity planning training. Um, additionally, something that's coming up soon, uh, we're working with a partner to help develop this training into an online learning environment so that the brick and mortar function, which has traditionally not met the business where they're at when they're interested, um, this online learning environment would allow uh, them to get this information when they're interested and in their own office. So that's something that is coming. Uh, uh, you may have remembered in the past, there used to be fewer areas of business continuity planning. Uh, we've updated that to a total of 15 areas of business continuity planning. And you can see all of those there. And each of these areas constitutes a potential presentation to your local jurisdiction. If you wanna focus on one, or if you wanna do an overview of all of them, or if you wanna go way in, into the weeds on every single principle, we can do that. And so um, feel free to reach out to us when you want to have any of those points presented within your local jurisdiction. Now, there uh, are also tools, business continuity planning tools that we provide or link you to, things that exist external from the Division of Emergency Management, as well as things that we've built internally. Uh, this is a great tool for businesses that want to start the process of building business continuity plans. And uh, you can find that on our website. And the, uh, additionally, FEMA has created a ready business program and they highlight toolkits for hurricane, inland flooding, power outages, uh, earthquakes, as well as severe wind or tornado. And uh, you can find all of those tools at 
flash.org forward slash ready business right there in the link. And uh, this presentation, by the way, is in the toolkit that we'll be sharing with you. So you can actually access this if you need to and, and look back on it to refresh. And uh, Jeff Rankham is more than welcome to post the link to this presentation for all of you to see as well. Uh, FEMA created this video, kind of an introduction to that. We're not going to watch the video right now, but um, you can go onto our YouTube channel to our Be Ready Business playlist and you can see this video right on there. Um, additionally, Be Ready Business provides a lot of connection to the information that's coming out. Uh, we've got a Be Ready Business email list and you can subscribe right there, that short URL. Uh, you can subscribe to receive private sector preparedness related emails. And uh, that list continues to grow. Uh, share that with others around you so that they can access um, the preparedness information that we're sending out via email. Uh, additionally, you see below it is a calendar. Um, that short URL goes straight to the Be Ready Business calendar uh, where you can see scheduled events that are coming up, whether it's webinars or other events where uh, it's, uh, applicable to the private sector. So, and then also on our social media platforms, Be Ready Utah's social media platforms, we've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can follow hashtag Be Ready Business to follow the conversation in there. Sometimes information kind of gets um, buried. And if you want to find private sector preparedness related specific messages within our social media, just search for hashtag be ready business. And then also we've got a whole ton of ideas and tools and things on our Pinterest account. So be ready. Utah has a Pinterest account. Uh, if you go to Pinterest and look up be ready, Utah, you'll even find a, a private sector business related Pinterest board where you can uh, get ideas for private sector preparedness. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Be Ready Utah has a YouTube channel where webinars like these get put onto those YouTube channels. And uh, there's a lot of great videos there that businesses could utilize to uh, promote emergency preparedness principles within their business. And emergency managers could utilize some of those videos as well to help promote private sector preparedness within their communities. So lots of great resources. One resource specifically useful for our local emergency managers is the Private Sector Preparedness Council. Um, this can be a whole nother webinar of its own if, if people want to hear about what is PSPC, and we can talk on that as well. But just a, a brief, uh, a PSPC is a small coalition of local leaders that plan and carry out events and initiatives and provides a support forum that promotes the disaster resiliency of the private sector within your community. And uh, this is typically comprised of the local emergency manager, somebody from the local chamber of commerce to represent the chamber there. And then especially within the municipality, a municipal economic development office, somebody from that office um, has a keen interest in this. And then there may be some additional private sector leaders and volunteers that may help out with the whole planning effort that team plans things and then gets things out to the private sector within their community. And uh, Be Ready Utah has set up the template and uh, provides the concept. And then it's up to the locals to either join an existing private sector preparedness council or to start one. Um, if uh, there's the guidance, the concept guidance is linked right there. You can see the short URL right there where you can access that. And as additionally, um, the private sector preparedness councils uh, promote that private sector resilience. And who better than to have a grassroots 
um, connectivity there. Um, local jurisdictions have their own local problems and uh, being able to create this network environment uh, for opportunities for them to, to coordinate together. And then identifying those needs and capabilities locally, building those business continuity plans. PSBCs can be instrumental in helping out with that. And then coordinating a private sector and municipal emergency plans, as well as plans uh, th this, this group plans and organizes those disaster preparedness trainings and educational events for the private sector within your local community. And they can connect the private sector with the latest and greatest tools and information on disaster preparedness that you can get from our, our emails, the Be Ready Utah emails and social media posts. And then also helps involve the private sector in local emergency drills, exercises, and service opportunities. So that's a little bit about uh, private sector preparedness councils. The Be Ready Business Toolkit, accessible right there. If you go to that link, uh, you'll be able to get uh, the Business Continuity Planning Toolkit, the Private Sector Preparedness Council Toolkit, and there's a lot more information in there. And we continue to add to it there's a lot of great information to help empower you to be able to do what needs to be done. Additionally, Be Ready Utah provides a recognition program. And there's uh, recognition opportunities both for families, schools, businesses, and communities. So on the private sector side, um, when they fulfill the preparedness criteria for the Be Ready Business Recognition Program, that helps their business build a business continuity plan and act according to that plan. Uh, being ready definitely has a great economic value in disaster strikes. And such businesses that fulfill the criteria are rewarded with some of the following items. So one is an actual official certificate from Be Ready Utah. Uh, once you complete the criteria, uh, an, a certificate will be automatically sent to you. And then um, there's a logo. We've got a Be Ready Utah logo that is customized specifically for your business um, or for an individual family or school or community as well. So that you can be a Be Ready business. And uh, uh, you can utilize this logo. It'll be sent to you and uh, a format where you can print it off, utilize it on the websites, printed materials, other outreach opportunities and whatnot. Uh, additionally, we recognize you on the Be Ready Utah website and on our social media. Um, our team will say, hey, we want to recognize this organization. They name the organization or the individual or family or the community and recognize them as having completed all of that criteria. Uh, additionally, um, their uh, CERT has an application in the workplace environment. Um, whether or not your, uh, the, the workplaces within your community just send their staff to your local jurisdictional CERT program, or if they make an in-house program that is allowable by um, FEMA standards, where they could make a CERT team in-house and kind of create plans according to that. And there's a starter guide right there for you. You can access them for knowing how to start building a CERT program internally to your business. Uh, additionally, uh, National Neighborhood Watch has a toolkits and a lot of information for business watch, uh, private sector uh, crime reduction and uh, principles that can help out with that. So there's, there's a gut bunch of great information there. Uh, another resource that Be Ready Business provides is a, we want to create a house, a place, a vehicle where subject matter experts can be listed and then they can uh, be contacted by you. So local jurisdictions can actually go to this list, find out who speaks on what subjects, and then you can contact them and say, hey, could you come and speak to us locally on this subject? So there's, there's a, a form to self-identify, and then there's also a link to uh, be able to see uh, just who's on the list. Uh, 
So just for an example, I'm going to just navigate over to our BeReadyUtah.gov website. Um, on here, you can go to the business side of things and just go straight down to it. Or you can uh, navigate down and see Be Ready, the business right there, and just click on that. And that goes straight to our Be Ready business website. On the Be Ready business website, we've got information for make a plan, get a kit, be informed, get involved. Uh, and in the make a plan section, um, or even a little bit further down, you'll be able to access the private sector preparedness council side of things. So um, you can access, um, you can know how to find a private sector preparedness council near you or register one. So if one doesn't exist yet, you can register your own preparedness council just by going to that to that link and filling that out. Um, additionally, um, I think maybe further down, let me just double check here. You can find out who the experts are. So there's expert contacts, or if you are an expert and want to self-identify, um, go ahead and click that link and it'll go straight to this uh, Google form where you can fill out and say, hey, I'm an expert in these categories, uh, list me, and you'll automatically be listed. So, and then um, individuals can go to find an expert and they can see who's there currently. And as you might see, the list is small, it's short, uh, but as you uh, in local jurisdictions begin to point people our direction and say, hey, get on this list, as we share each other's um, uh, professionals and experts within the various uh, training fields, send them here, have them self-identify uh, so that individuals like you can call upon them in a moment's notice to help present on various topics. So that's that's that. That's kind of how to access that. Um, also, um, we're collecting stories and we're going to be sharing stories on our website real stories of businesses that have been impacted by disasters and whether or not they had a business continuity plan versus uh, if they did have one and what the outcome was that. Uh, and stories are oftentimes a great way to learn um, firsthand, you know, what, what should I as a business be looking for and getting great ideas. So um, additionally, in the Division of Emergency Management, one of our partners is the public-private partnership and they are they're there to help mostly within the critical infrastructure side of the private sector in getting those um, organizations up and running and they they provide site security assessments they provide cyber security assessments and uh, security information systems and supply chain resilience they'll assess that and active assailant resources and training, as well as uh, private sector advocacy and uh, liaison to the government. So, but but their biggest focus is on that critical infrastructure side of things. And Braden Norris, who's part of our staff, um, is great to contact to access those. Um, additionally, we keep um, Be Ready Business is keeping an eye out for information and resources coming from many other sources, and we're trying to make those available to you. So there's a lot of business-related information and resources on the coronavirus.utah.gov page, and we would help point people to those. The Be Ready Business is fielding relevant information from the Salt Lake Chamber of Commerce and trying to get that information out to the private sector as well. And our University of Utah um, has a whole bunch of uh, webinars and other resources for, for businesses. And we try to field that and get that out to you as well. And then there's also the um, US Chamber. So on a national perspective, the US Chamber has a whole bunch of resources that we try to field and make available on our Be Ready Utah website or through our emails or through social media so that the private sectors can kind of have this one-stop shop to get the information that they need. So those are a lot of the things that Be Ready Business provides. Many of those resources 
are especially helpful for the local emergency managers to be able to promote private sector preparedness, but all of those resources as well are especially useful for the private sector themselves. So um, in your networking from a local community level, point them to bereadyutah.gov to the website, have them sign up for all of those uh, various links so they can get the emails and they can stay informed about what is coming up and what is going out. And additionally, if you have great ideas for private sector preparedness that could be useful for other jurisdictions, share them our way. And um, we'll take a look at those and see how those can be then perpetuated forward to the private sector. So with that, um, are there any questions? Hey, James. Yeah. I got one. Hey, will you, how do I find out if there is a PC or a PSPC near me? Okay, great question. Great question. So again, uh, let's go to the website. Um, if you go, let me back up back to the homepage. You're, you're going to land here on our website, bereadyutah.gov. Go to the business page. And on the business page, you will see a link to private sector preparedness councils. And that is the landing page. You can get there from there or right up here, right there. You can click on that one as well. Go to the private sector councils website. And you can access a lot of the tools necessary for there. And right here, that link is where you can discover whether or not there is a PSPC near you. Now, the list is small, and that's because it's up to the local jurisdictions to self-identify on that list. So emergency managers, as you start creating private sector preparedness councils, go to this link right here to then register a private sector preparedness council, and you'll automatically appear on this list for your local businesses to find you and contact you so that they can get connected with your local private sector preparedness council. Great question. Any other questions? Well, that's good advice. Thanks, man. Does anybody else have a question for James? Anything else you want to share, James, since this is your guys' new site? Um, yeah. Yeah, um, one thing that you'll notice on the, the Be Ready business page is we're in the process of building an entire suite of business continuity planning principles. Now, if you go to make a plan for business, that is a landing page where you can see all of these links. And these links will eventually go to a page of its own with all sorts of information to empower each of those individual principles. Uh, they're not built out yet. Um, we're in the process of getting those onto there. So those will appear there soon. Um, additionally, again, if, the, if you have local experts who can present on any of these principles and uh, are okay with being contacted, point them here, have them self-identify as an expert on those principles and then they will appear in that expert contact list. This will empower you as local emergency managers to have a, a, an ongoing growing list of professionals that you can call upon. So uh, that your local pr private sector preparedness councils, you could start lining up the presenters and you know who to call, they would be on that list. So start pointing people that direction. Yeah. With that, Be Ready Business is here to help our local emergency managers promote private sector preparedness. Let us know if there is any way that we can support you in your efforts to make your community more resilient. Any other questions? Okay. Well, hey, thanks James for your presentation today. Um, as a reminder, this webinar and all other webinars in this series will be available on the DEM website at dem.utah.gov slash exercises, 
or now at dem.utah.gov slash I wonder. So our next webinar will be held on October 7th and it'll be presented by Kevin Barzenbrook and he will discuss what services could the National Weather Service provide to emergency managers. If any of you have an I wonder topic suggestion or anything that you would like to hear more on, please reach out to me at Jeff Frankham at utah.gov to have your topic added to our calendar. We're always excited to help you explore and get to know all that DEM can offer the emergency management community. Until next time, keep wondering. <laughs>